While his arch was still being built, Constantine legalized the practice of Christianity. Its art could now rise from the darkness of the catacombs to celebrate the Son of God and his promise of life everlasting. Junius Bassus, prefect of Rome, was baptized on his deathbed and buried in this marble sarcophagus. A masterwork of early Christian art, it depicts the expulsion of Adam and Eve, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, Daniel in the lion's den, the arrest of St. Paul, and other scenes that have become icons of the faith. The central figure is Christ the giver of law, seated on the throne of heaven, flanked by Peter and Paul. But elements of the pagan past remain. Calus, the Roman god of the skies, supports the floor of heaven. Christ wears the robe of a Greek philosopher. and his beardless, youthful face bears more than a passing resemblance to pagan images of Apollo. The first great churches were variations of the Roman assembly hall known as a basilica, with a central nave often ending in a semicircular apse, and side aisles screened by colonnades. Santa Sabina, finished in 432, is a particularly fine example of these simple but elegant early Christian basilicas. The Roman arch appears here in yet another form, springing directly from the column capitals. The insignia of the new Christianized empire, whose capital is no longer Rome but Constantinople, are placed with perhaps unconscious symbolism atop the Corinthian columns taken from a pagan building. Once reviled and persecuted, Christianity is triumphant. Historians have argued about the causes of the fall of the Roman Empire ever since it happened when St. Augustine wrote that the empire had been part of God's divine plan for the furtherance of Christianity through the world and that the empire had now fulfilled its historical purpose. Modern scholars have found political, material, economic, social reasons for the decline, but have been most impressed by the great spiritual crisis which swept through all classes of Roman society in the fourth century and is marked by the breakdown of the social, ethical, and religious concepts which had bound the old classical worldview together. The Roman Empire had brought to its rulers inconceivable wealth, as we can still see today in its vast building projects. But the rights of individual people to moral fulfillment had never been met. So the rise of Christianity, the superseding of the great pagan temples of Rome, like this one of Antoninus Pius, by Christian churches, marks a fundamental shift in the Western story into the inner life towards personal salvation. The successors of the Roman Empire would be the barbarians, Angles, Saxons, Franks, Goths, third world immigrants attracted to the fading splendors as to a gold rush. They received the Latin language and the Christian faith from Rome and assimilated Roman ideas of government to their own customary law. And there lies the key to the synthesis which will become the Western tradition, a synthesis of Greco-Roman, Judeo-Christian and Germanic. And that synthesis would be achieved during the long struggles of the Dark Ages, which followed on the fall of the Roman Empire.